Hello. If you think the conflict between Israel and the Arabs began in the 20th century, think again. It's a very old story, and there are accounts of it from 23 centuries ago. Let's review them. First, this week's Torah portion, Toldot, begins with, and these are the generations of Isaac, <coughs> the son of Abraham. Abraham fathered Isaac, unquote. Why the repetition? If Isaac is identified as the son of Abraham, why immediately add Abraham fathered Isaac, since that should be obvious? The Midrash Dan Huma says that it had to say Abraham fathered Isaac because malicious gossip had it that Sarah had conceived from King Abimelech, who had detained her for a while. This, they said, is all the more probable because she had lived with Abraham for many years and had not conceived from him. Sforno, the 16th century Italian commentator, said that this was to emphasize that Isaac alone is considered the seed of Abraham. Let me offer some background. Abraham fathered Ishmael with his Egyptian maid Hagar, then sent mother and son away at the insistence of his wife Sarah. After Sarah's death, Abraham married Keturah and had six more sons. What happened to these six sons? The Torah says, Quote, and Abraham sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastwards to the east country. Unquote. Josephus tells us that the east country is Saudi Arabia. So we see that the conflict in the Middle East is a very old story. Abraham had eight sons in all, but only one of them was chosen to continue Abraham's mission. The Talmud records that the very quote we are studying was used by Abraham's other sons to get a share in the Holy Land way back in the days of Alexander, when he conquered the land of Israel in 332 BCE, and Jerusalem surrendered to him. Quote, On another occasion, the Ishmaelites and the Keturians, descendants of the other sons of Abraham, brought a lawsuit against the Jews before Alexander of Macedonia. They pleaded as follows, Canaan belongs jointly to all of us, for it is written in the Torah, now these are the generation of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's maidservant, bore to Abraham. And these are the sons of Ishmael, twelve princes. And it is further written, and these are the generation of Isaac, Abraham's son. Hence, both being sons of Abraham, they had equal claims upon the lands. The Keturians made a similar claim. Thereupon, Gebiha ben Pesisa said to the sages, Give me permission to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedonia. Should they defeat me, then say, You have defeated one of our ignorant men. While if I defeat them, say, The law of Moses has defeated you. So they gave him permission, and he went and pleaded against them. Where is your proof coming from? he asked. From the Torah, they replied. Then I too, said he, will bring you proof only from the Torah, for it is written, quote, and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived. Unquote. Now, if a father made a bequest to his children in his lifetime and sent them away from each other, does any one of them have a claim upon the other? Obviously not. What gifts did he give his other sons? Rabbi Jeremiah ben Abba said, he imparted to them the secrets of unhallowed arts, the knowledge of sorcery, demons, etc. That is, they went over to the dark side. Unquote. That's the Talmud. The Midrash also records the story of that lawsuit before Alexander, with interesting additions and variations. Quotes, Midrash. In the days of Alexander of Macedonia, the Ishmaelites came to dispute the birthright with Israel and they were accompanied by two evil families, the Canaanites and the Egyptians. Who shall go to plead against them? It was asked. Gebiah, the son of Kosem, said, I will go and plead against them. Take heed not to let the land fall into their hands, they cautioned him. I will go and argue with them, he replied. If I defeat them, well and good. While if not, you can say, who is this hunchback to take up our case? So he went to debate with them. Said Alexander of Macedonia to them, Who is the plaintiff and who is the defendant? The Ishmaelites said, we are the, we are the claimants, and we base our claim on their own laws. It is written in the Torah, If a man has two wives, 
one beloved and the other hated. And they both have borne him children. And if the firstborn son belongs to the one who was hated, then he may not make the son of the beloved one before the son of the hated. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that, is, that he has, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Unquote. And our progenitor Ishmael was the firstborn. Said Gebiah, the son of Kosem, Your majesty, cannot a man do as he wishes with his sons? Alexander replied, Yes. Then he pursued, It is written, And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But where is the deed of gift to his other sons? Let us explain the question. A father cannot give all to one son and disinherit his other sons even in his lifetime. If he does, his action is null and void, and the ordinary laws of inheritance apply. Back to the Midrash. He replied, the Torah, does, the Torah does say, but to the sons of the concubines that Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. Thereupon they departed in shame. The Canaanites then pleaded, we also base our suit against them on their own Torah. Everywhere in the Torah, the land of Israel is called the land of Canaan. So let them return us our country. Gebiah, the son of Kosem, said to him, Your majesty, can a man not do as he pleases with his slave? Yes, he replied. Then surely it is written in the Torah, A slave of slaves shall Canaan be to his brothers. Hence the, Canaanite, the Canaanites are now our slaves and are not entitled to our lands. Thereupon they fled in shame. Then said the Egyptians, We also base our suit against them on their own Torah. 600,000 left us laden with silver and gold, as it is written in their Torah, and they despoiled the Egyptians. So let them return to us our silver and our gold. Said Gebiah, the son of Kosem, Your Majesty, 600,000 men served them as slaves for 210 years. Let them pay us for their labor at the rate of one dinar per day. Thereupon, mathematicians sat and calculated what was owed the Israelites for their labor. And before they reached the hundred-year mark, Egypt was found to be forfeit for the sum due. So the Egyptians departed in shame. End of quote. Now, Abraham did not bless his son Isaac before he died, as you might expect, because he felt he would have to include his other sons in the blessing, and he did not want to do that. The Midrash says, quote, the Torah says, And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. What does this mean? Rabbi Nehemiah said, It means the power of blessing. Abraham argued, If I bless Isaac, I have to include the children of Ishmael and of Keturah. And if I do not bless the children of Ishmael and of Keturah, how can I bless Isaac? On reflection, however, he decided, I'm only flesh. I will do my duty, and whatever God wishes to do in his world, let him do it. Consequently, when Abraham died, the Holy One, blessed be he, appeared to Isaac and blessed him. Thus it is written in the Torah, and it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed Isaac his son. Unquote. So Abraham left the task of blessing Isaac to God, to avoid including his other sons. God also made it clear his covenant shall be only through Isaac. The Torah says, quote, And God said, Sarah your wife shall bear you a son indeed and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he father, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish through Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this set time in the next year." Unquote. Modern Islamists charge that the Jews have falsified their own Torah to avoid recognizing the spiritual importance of Ishmael, whom they view as the forerunner of Islam. Yet their own holy book recognizes Israel as Jewish. The Quran himself said, quote, And Moses said to his people, O my people, enter the holy land which God has assigned to you, and do not turn back ignominiously, for then you will be overthrown to your own ruin. Unquotes. Quran 520-21. Now it is fair to ask the question, why did God allow such conflicting claims to occur? Why did Abraham not have just Isaac, then Isaac just Jacob? 
In the end, Abraham's son Isaac did indeed lead to Judaism, but Abraham's sons Ishmael and the sixth from Keturah led to Islam, and Abraham's grandson Esau led to Rome, then eventually to Christianity. The result was 4,000 years of conflicts and counting. We'll discuss this on another occasion. Shabbat Shalom.